When you heard it on the radio, um, you knew it was bad. We are fully engulfed, fully engulfed building. We have people on fire inside. Fire aircraft will have to be on scene. I've always said, you know, being a firefighter was the greatest job in the world. It's just sometimes you wish you weren't working. Our stretcher and ourselves, myself and my partner, were standing there watching the firefighters working not 10 feet from us. And they were pulling um, bodies up um, with ropes. They were reaching in, lassoing them, and just pulling. And as bodies would come out, they would, um, they, they had trouble trying to get them to the area that was marked as the morgue, temporary morgue, which was nothing more than a tarp laid on the ground. And the stretcher was in such a way that as they dragged them over the hood of one car, they would use the stretcher for the bridge to get them over to the hood of the other car to get them over to, to drag them over to the, to the morgue area. And the young guy just stopped in this look in his eyes and he said, it moved. And I looked and I said back, no, it didn't. And it was the first time I had referred to anyone as an it, but you couldn't tell. You know, you, you couldn't, you, you could see it was obviously a person, but the injuries were such that you couldn't decipher male from female. I got four victims over here, third degree burns. I'm on the side of the ladder truck. Victim one, bring your line. Victim two, bring your line. Victim three, bring your line. Victim four, bring your line. I don't know. I mean, we're we'll taking him to the hospital and bus load, you know? Yeah, the rest is lined up, taking him in as we, as we find him. Okay, um, you know, uh... Early in the morning after the event of the station nightclub fire, my technicians had actually recreated from news video the stage setting here in this fire test facility. They wanted to be able to burn and understand what happened. How did it get out of control so quickly? That's what we do here, we do fire protection research. They found very quickly that the 
foam walls created a superheated gas and caused a flashover event in this facility under one minute. A flashover is an accumulation of superheated gas at the ceiling and when it reaches a certain temperature all combustibles in the room will spontaneously combust. Uh, the combustibles in the nightclub would be the furnishings, the wall coverings, the flooring material, and unfortunately, even the people. Three days before the, uh, the station event, this fine line fire occurred. And in the fine line fire, there's 120 people in the facility. Pyrotechnics from a band ignited the ceiling. 120 people got out of the building safely for a number of reasons. Number one, it had a fire sprinkler system. Number two, uh, a Chicago incident where there was a trampling death of 21 people caused the owner to meet with the employees the morning before and talk about safety, talk about crowd control. And just preventive measures, just talking about it and telling the employees how to deal with the crowd in that type of an event um, saved a lot of people's lives. Having the right fire protection equipment, having extinguishers, maintaining your fire protection equipment all contributed to why the headline was the band had to cancel that night instead of 120 people being killed or injured. I'm aware that the Station Nightclub Fire did not have automatic sprinklers. It's disappointing because the building construction, the surface finish, the foam that was used in the band area should never have been there. The pyrotechnics should not have been used unless it was permitted and approved by the authority having jurisdiction. It was not, but it was still used. So you had a, you had a couple of events that occurred that combined to create a catastrophic event. Even with that, having proper crowd control, having proper exiting, having a plan is important. Practice that plan. Know what it is. Practice it with your employees. Go through the routine. It has to be second nature to them. It can't be a surprise. Multiple changes occurred as a result of the Station Nightclub fire. One of them was the requirement uh, for automatic sprinklers in existing facilities when the occupant load was more than 100 people. If a facility owner is inviting people into their facility, that they're responsible for the safety of those people and providing the automatic sprinklers is one of those steps. When a sprinkler operates due to a fire event, this is what the sprinkler discharge will look like in that area if it were a sidewall sprinkler. Good. So if the ceiling temperature in the area of a sprinkler gets to 155 degrees, a sprinkler will activate. It will cool the temperature of the air, preventing flashover, and it will discharge water to prevent what's burning from continuing to burn and control it until the fire department gets there to uh, clean up the fire. I, I use the phrase at home, I wouldn't send my children to a zoo that didn't have cages for the animals because it would just be absurd to send my children into somewhere where I knew they wouldn't be safe because the zoo couldn't afford cages. It's the occupancy owner's responsibility to provide the safety of the people coming to visit. They're, they're providing a service, entertainment, and they're responsible for the safety, so that's what they should do, is comply with the codes and the standards. And, and sometimes they're confusing. Sometimes you need help. 
call your local fire department, call your building department, tell them that you need some help in planning or what to do or how you train your people. They will provide that assistance. If they can't, they will give you someone that can help you. And it's important that the services are out there for people to get the information to do it right.